Hello everyone and welcome to another product review video and today, well it's finally happened, uh, it's time to review the Chimera uh, Colors, uh, both with K's, paint set. Uh, so, uh, Chimera Colors are something that I've seen a lot of miniature painters using uh, recently. Uh, they're something that a lot of people asked me to review. And uh, I'm excited I finally got my hands on them. <laughs> it took a little while, uh, but uh, because they kept going out of stock. So clearly they're quite powerful uh, and quite popular. Uh, but I want to talk about exactly what I think of them after using them for a while. So let's get to the basics first. You can get the full set. It's 13 colors uh, for 57 euros. Uh, you order direct from them. Like I said, they do tend to go out of stock fairly regularly. Uh, the colors that you get are sort of aligned to the spectrum. Basically, you start with sort of a, a red oxide, a very deep red color. Uh, you go through bright red, orange, uh, an ochre, a cold, basically a warm yellow and a cold yellow. Uh, there's a green, uh, a phalo blue, uh, more of a phalo green where it's... Uh, so these different colors... Uh, a purple, a violet, uh, a magenta, a black, and a white. And then, of course, you do also get, here's your black and white, and you do, which is just namely, named carbon black and the white. And uh, you also get a medium with it. There are, it is a much more limited paint range than what we might be familiar with uh, if we're adherence to things like Vallejo or Citadel colors, where there are hundreds and hundreds of colors in the range and everything we could ever sort of imagine in between. Uh, Chimera is really more about, as they say, pure pigment colors. So it's really using the true colors, the true pigments, to make uh, a much more limited but intense set of colors. And I have to say, uh, after using these for just a little while, I really, really love them. Uh, they are fun to work with. They serve you much better. If you're a fan of the sort of traditional artist palette or you like mixing colors, stuff like that, then you are going to have a great time with this set. Um, they do much more favor people who want to create their own color palettes, their own recipes, things like that. Uh, Consistency-wise, here they are on the palette. You can see the black is a little more, uh, tends to be a little more liquidy, um, as is not that uncommon. It's, it's, it's a good black. It's a really nice, rich, black, intense color. Uh, they're a very creamy paint. Uh, so here, I'll just kind of stretch that out. You'll see the consistency of it. Um, your traditional sort of liquid pigments. Uh, but they are really, really nice, intense colors. Uh, just to give you an example, let's go straight out of here. Uh, basically, no water on the brush. We'll just literally go to the back of my hand, and you can see how strong you get of a color out of that red oxide. Okay. So you get that nice, really rich, intense tone. Uh... If we talk about them in application, let's grab a little, let's grab our uh, our dark fire demon rift here with a lot of fire. Uh, I've got some fiery type colors on the palette, so we should be uh, good to go here. We're gonna grab ourselves a nice big oversized ridiculous brush, uh, size 14. Why not? Let's go for it. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little fire. Uh, so here I've got some of the red uh, red ochre, the yellow ochre, and the cold yellow on the palette, as well as a little white and black back here. And you'll see application-wise, as we put this on here, let's start with our hottest color. So we'll start with a little bit of the cold yellow down in there. Yellow, as always, still the weakest color of the set. Um, but, I mean, that's not surprising. Yellows are always weak. It's still a very intense yellow. Uh, we'll go straight into the ochre here, which you can see when you get to the yellow ochre, it gets a lot more powerful. And then we'll start mixing in some of that red, and we'll just pull those together. Good. 
get those on there. You can see just how much coverage I'm able to get out of it. Because they're so intense, when you have just a little on your brush, honestly, it goes a long way, okay? Let's grab a little black and start mixing some of that in. Great for your wet blending tasks, stuff like that. If you're if you're a wet blender painter, if that's your your style, you're very much going to enjoy uh, this paint set. Okay. So that's kind of the application. You can see you get a nice intense color there. Um, you can uh, make glazes out of them and such quite easily. They do. Uh, their medium will work well for that, but as will any medium, frankly. Uh, they flow pretty well right out of the the pot. I haven't really had much occasion to use things like flow improver or stuff like that with them, but you certainly can. Uh, nothing, it's no, it doesn't hurt to, to use that sort of thing. Uh, they, where you're going to have your biggest challenges. So who, who would I recommend these for? I love these paints. I have had so much fun painting with them, but uh, I'm a paintaholic and I like mixing my colors. Things that are notably absent from this set that you might be used to are, say, all your grays and all your uh, flesh tones and all your browns. Basically, all the neutral non-colors, right? The things that aren't colors, that aren't supported by pigment, that are all themselves mixed you're gonna be mixing those all yourself. So for example here, if I want a nice gray, let's grab a little black. Let's mix it in with some of that white. Let's pull in a little bit of that red ochre, just so we get an interesting brown, to, or sorry, gray tone, right? And we can get a nice warm gray, just that easy, right? But that's the kind of thing you're going to be doing. We can do the same thing if you want flesh tones. Uh, you're going to be making, you're going to be following basically how the old masters would have mixed flesh tones, which is you want to make a nice orange color. Use both of our yellows here. So once we get a nice, nice orange tone. Then we pull in a little bit of our white. And we get something that is a pretty traditional Caucasian flesh tone. Of course, you can add blue to get shadows or deeper colors and things like that, all right? Uh, so, my point is, is that you will find yourself mixing the colors yourself uh, a lot. If that's something that scares you, if you're more of an out of the pot painter where you want the color to just be the color, then honestly, this isn't the set for you. But you can see how there, that flesh tone I just mixed. Let's grab a little model here. Grab one of our sisters and drop that right on there. Right, an easy peasy lemon squeezy. Boom, we've got a nice flesh tone. Okay. So, uh, certainly everything is doable. You know, artists, uh, there, there are various artist palettes uh, that consist of only five or six colors. So, uh, 13, you're, you're frankly being spoiled uh, with, with all of this, this choice. So if you're someone that likes to work in intense colors, uh, to have some, some paint that'll really go a long way, I'll say, you know, each of these is 30 milliliter pots, basically, or, or pots is the wrong word, sorry, dropper bottles, uh, I apologize. Uh, 30, milli, 30 uh, milliliters of paint. Uh, you know, they'll really, really go far. Because these are so heavily pigmented, it does not take much of the paint to cover a lot. If you're working in a traditional sort of layer fashion where you're working some water in there or some medium in there and, and covering over everything, 
you will be absolutely amazed at how far every drop of this paint goes. Uh, it is valid for both brush and airbrush, as it says right on the back of the bottle. Uh, I've put it through both and had no problems. It does go right through your airbrush. You have to thin it, of course. Uh, I thin everything through my airbrush. Uh, and a little more than one-to-one -one of thinner to, um, to paint is what I found uh, works really well. So I use something approximating two-to-one, but it depends on what I'm going for. Uh, for just a standard base coat, it'd be something like two-to-one. Thinner flow improver to, uh, to paint. Uh, they dry quite matte, uh, so here this is uh, dry at this point mostly. You can see that it doesn't have a lot of reflection. That's right under quite a bright light. Uh, so that was, you know, a very rough, quick, wet blend, but you can see how that came out with no issue. Uh, they're perfectly fine for all your normal tasks. That is to say, if you're going to make a wash out of them, if you're going to make a glaze out of them, all those kinds of things work without issue. Uh, because they're so, so, so pigment intense, you can really thin them out a great deal. Um, you can take these way, way, way down. So let's grab a little bit of this ochre here and we'll just start thinning it out. We'll just stick to water, no medium, no nothing like that. All right. We can thin it way down and still get a real nice glaze color there that goes on super smooth All right so if I wanted to come in and add some of that glaze right there very easy no issue okay so wrapping it up pros Wonderfully intense colors. Uh, good price for what you get, honestly. Uh, at 57 euros for 14 uh, really big bottles of paint. 13, really, because I'm not going to count the acrylic medium. That's just a bunch of medium you could get anywhere. But still, 13 big 30 milliliter bottles of paint that are going to go a long way. Uh, that are really, you know, like they're because they're so intense is a pretty good deal. Uh, I find that to be a, a perfectly compelling price for an investment because they will last you for years and years and years if you're a normal painter. Uh, there are thousands of miniatures waiting to be painted inside these bottles, so I find that to be pretty compelling price-wise. Uh, if you're somebody who likes mixing your own colors, who likes making your own palettes, who isn't, who sort of understands how different paints are going to work together to create different colors, this is a great set for you. If the idea of working or challenging yourself with a traditional artist palette has been interesting to you, this is a great set for you. If you're someone who wants to have your, your colors a little more out of the bottle, that's going to be tough. Now, what I'll say is at the same time, you can always supplement these, right? Like, you don't, I mixed a gray, I mixed a flesh tone. You don't have to do that. You could always just use these as your base colors anytime you want to go for a red ochre or a bright cold yellow. Uh, or a warm yellow or something like that. You could get these guys out. And you can still have your Vallejo, your Citadel for your browns, your grays, your flesh tones, etc. Uh, so supplementing them is, of course, certainly fine. These mix with any other paints without issue. And like I said, they go through the airbrush with, or brush without any kind of trouble whatsoever. But I'll say I've been reaching for them quite a bit in the past weeks since I got them. Uh, I love them, especially... For resaturating colors, uh, I find very often I'm making glazes out of them, uh, maybe even sometimes mixing them with a little ink to resaturate after a strong highlight to re-pop that color back in. Uh, so there's just lots of options with these. They're great paints overall. I definitely give them an A. Um, I love them. I think it's fantastic. But again, know yourself. Uh, if you're someone who likes uh, this type of product, really intense colors, who wants to work in these bright, strong colors and is willing to mix a little to get there, then these are the set for you. Okay? So, there you go. That's Chimera Colors. Uh, I give them an A. I think they're fantastic. I, I hope if you check them out, you enjoy them as well. Uh, but as always, I thank you very much for watching this review. Give it a like if you liked it. That really helps. It helps other people find this video when you, give, when you just click that little button. Uh, subscribe for additional product reviews, uh, as well as our Hobby Cheating series and Warhammer Weekly and everything else we do here. Uh, we do lots of shows every week, but I very much appreciate you watching this one, and as always, we'll see you next time.
Thank you.